After Sami Zayn betrayed the bloodline at the Royal Rumble, it now appears to be confirmed that we are going to get Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn at Elimination Chamber for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Speaking of the bloodline, Jey Uso has seemingly implied that he is done with the faction and wants a future match against Roman Reigns. Cody Rhodes thanks specific WWE executives for helping him through his injury recovery process. How long are the contracts for the talent that have returned under the Triple H regime? We've got details on that. Beth Phoenix has a message for Rhea Ripley after making her return at the Royal Rumble this past weekend. And Pat McAfee also comments on his return at the Royal Rumble. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of world wrestling entertainment. And let's start off talking about what the world is talking about right now. And that is the bloodline. That is the the situation that <laughs> ended the Royal Rumble this past weekend. One of, I suppose, the, the greatest angles in Royal Rumble history. So it's in modern day WWE history. An angle that's got a lot of people talking. It's what they've been building to for months. And that's Sami Zayn finally turning his back on the bloodline but then being attacked brutally by the undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns, by Jimmy Uso, by Solo Sokoa, but not by Jay Uso. We'll talk about that in a short amount of time. But we'll start off talking about the plans for Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns, because the plan for Zayn and Reigns following the final segment at the Royal Rumble has now been revealed. In the main event of the January 28th Premium Live event, Roman Reigns defeated Kevin Owens to retain his undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Now, following the bout, the bloodline continued to beat Kevin Owens down. Reigns eventually handed Sami Zayn a chair and demanded that he join in. Zayn ultimately turned on Reigns and the bloodline, striking the tribal chief with a chair, while Jey Uso walked away from the scene conflicted. Jimmy Uso, Solo Sokoa and Reigns though continued to brutalise Kevin Owens as well as brutalising their former honorary Us. Now during the latest Wrestling Observer Daily Update, Dave Meltzer revealed that Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn is quote as confirmed as it can be, end quote for Elimination Chamber, following heavy speculation that the bout would take place of course, Elimination Chamber taking place in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, that being the hometown of Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens too. Discussing the plans Meltzer writes, quote, Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn is now as confirmed as it can be for the February 18 Elimination Chamber show main event in Montreal. I'm not sure what the men's chamber match would be for since you've got Cody Rhodes already for the main event at WrestleMania. Of course, this is WWE and everything is subject to change, but major changes to planned pay-per-view shows have been less with Paul Levesque in charge. It had been heavily rumoured that the bout would take place at the February 18 premium live event as Elimination Chamber emanates from the Bell Centre in Zane's hometown of Quebec, Canada. Cody Rhodes appears to be set to face the winner of this match as the American Nightmare won the 2023 men's Royal Rumble match to earn a title shot at WrestleMania 39 in April. However, one could argue that it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns or Sami Zayn at WrestleMania. There has been wide speculation that Cody Rhodes could challenge for just the WWE Championship, and that could be Seth Rollins. We could see a situation whereby maybe Adam Pearce takes the WWE Championship away from Roman Reigns heading into WrestleMania because it has to be defended on both nights. We've seen the Tag Team Championships now be defended separately. Why can't the WWE and Universal Championship be defended separately? Roman Reigns can say, I'm not going to do that, and then the WWE Championship is vacant and then it gets decided inside uh, the Elimination Chamber. That's won, let's say, by Seth Freak and Rollins and Cody Rhodes faces Rollins at WrestleMania. However, after the Royal Rumble, given that he was eliminated by Logan Paul, it appears that Seth Rollins is set to face off against Logan Paul at WrestleMania. So we don't really know. And again, that's not a bad thing. One of the criticisms of the Royal Rumble at the weekend was that the outcomes for quite a few of the matches were predictable. Most people thought Cody Rhodes was going to win. Most people thought Rhea Ripley was going to win. Most people assumed Roman Reigns was going to win. Most people thought Bray Wyatt was going to win. Same with Bianca Belair. It wasn't difficult to figure out who was going to win really any of the matches on the show. So the fact that we're at the end of January and we're looking towards WrestleMania and we're still uncertain as to which direction WWE is going to go in, you would think they have an idea in their mind, but the fact that it's difficult to guess isn't the worst thing in the world, in my opinion. Now, speaking of the bloodline, as I mentioned, one person that looks to be set to leave the bloodline is the conflicted Jay Uso, especially when you consider a social media post which you can see on the screen right now. Jey Uso has teased leaving the bloodline and not only that, having another match with Roman Reigns. 
at the Royal Rumble, the bloodline imploded before the fans' eyes when Sami Zayn hit Roman Reigns with a steel chair after Roman attempted to berate Sami into hitting Kevin Owens with the chair. Zayn nailing Reigns with the chair left Jey Uso stunned while Jey's brother Jimmy delivered a super kick to Sami. As Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa attacked Zayn, Jey left the ring and walked to the back conflicted. Of course, Jey Uso was the one that it took the longest to warm up to, uh, to warm up Sami Zayn. He was the one that said, this guy isn't blood. This guy isn't a member of the bloodline. You can't trust him. You can't trust him. Meanwhile, you had the likes of Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa saying you could trust him, and they liked Sami Zayn. They were doing the whole handshake kind of stuff. Eventually, though, after Sami Zayn proved dividends in the Survivor Series War Games match, Jey Uso started to warm up to Sami Zayn, and now he seems conflicted with the fact that the honorary Uso was kicked out of the faction. On Sunday, Jay took to Instagram and posted a photo of himself from WWE Royal Rumble with the caption of, quote, I'm out and a blood drop emoji. Further teasing his split from the bloodline and a potential rematch against the Tribal Chief, he also posted this uh, on his Instagram stories. You can see it right there. It's a picture of himself. It's a picture of Roman Reigns on his IG stories with the caption, Run it back. Jay Uso previously faced his cousin Roman back at 2020 for the WWE Universal Championship in two bouts in consecutive months, one at Clash of Champions in September and then Hell in a Cell in October of that year. He eventually, though, came around and acknowledged Roman as the tribal chief and the head of the table, and he's been the right-hand man main event Jey Uso ever since. Now, again... Will this lead to Jey Uso uh, leaving the bloodline? I suspect not. My kind of prediction for this one is that it's going to be Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn at Elimination Chamber. I think that Zayn's going to seemingly have the match won. Then it's going to be Jey Uso that costs Sami Zayn the match. That then spins off into Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus the Usos for the Tag Team Championships at WrestleMania. What set of Tag Team Championships, we don't know. But I think that's the direction that they're going in. I don't think Sami Sami Zayn is going to win the Undisputed Universal Championship at Elimination Chamber. However, given the popularity of the angle, given the reaction that the angle got, not just only inside the stadium on Saturday, but also around the world on social media, there could be a situation where we do pivot to Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn at WrestleMania, or there's a title match for Zayn on one of the nights of WrestleMania. I don't think that was the original plan, but... Plans change. Things get popular. Things get over. And it's safe to say Sami Zayn is very, very, very over right now. This is an interesting one because this is just, this is pro wrestling, I guess, pro wrestling fandom at its best. A photo has leaked online and it's revealed that a popular AEW star was spotted backstage at the Royal Rumble event. Cody Rhodes, of course, made his in ring return, entering at number 30 and winning the men's Royal Rumble match to punch his ticket for the main event of WrestleMania 39 at the Royal Rumble. Following his victory, Rhodes sent some symbolic shout outs to his former elite stablemates in the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. However, another AEW star star was closer than some fans may have thought during the show. In a picture posted on social media, a security camera photo was leaked and shows popular AEW star Ricky Starks alongside his mentor Cody Rhodes backstage at the Royal Rumble. Now, Rhodes has been a real-life friend and mentor for Starks for a number of years now. Starks even commented on Cody's Rumble victory on his Twitter page, noting the number 30 or the, the number of entry for the American Nightmare. He tweeted, quote, 30 is a great number, LFG, let's effing go. On Sunday, the AEW star once again took to Twitter to comment on the leaked photo and made reference to the infamous GTV angle from WWE's Attitude Era. Starks wrote, quote, damn, they brought back GTV. Of course, that was uh, a segment where security footage or compromising footage was leaked and uh, involved the likes of Eddie Guerrero being showering with people when he was meant to be with China or Mark Henry in bed with Mae Young, all that kind of stuff. It was eventually meant to signal the return of gold dust, but it never went anywhere. It's one of those attitude era angles that never went anywhere and never was spoken about again. Now, this is one of those weird things where people are like, oh, an AEW star backstage at WWE. God, is that that's going to get him heat, right? That should get him heat. No, it shouldn't. He's there supporting a friend. He didn't wrestle. He's allowed to go and support his friend, his mentor. His, you know, that, that, you're allowed to do that. Now, maybe if it was the other way around and a WWE star was seen backstage at AEW, you might have heat. In the old regime, maybe. But to be honest, when 
before Adam Cole signed with AEW, he was backstage all the time because Britt Baker was there. And WWE stars have been backstage at AEW events. It happens. They don't work there. They're not appearing on screen. Stop being tribal. The fact that this was leaked out, I guess to get a reaction from people is, to me, insane. Nevertheless, Ricky Starks was spotted backstage and he was there to support his friend. Now, speaking of Cody Rhodes, a lot of stories about Cody Rhodes, a lot of reaction coming out about Cody Rhodes since his Royal Rumble victory. Now, the 2023 Royal Rumble Rumble was a career-changing night for several different stars, but one man in particular now has guaranteed his ticket to the main event of WrestleMania 39, that being the American Nightmare. Cody Rhodes, of course, suffered a horrific torn pectoral injury in the build-up to the Hell in a Cell premium live event last June, which put him on the shelf until the Rumble. Following his Rumble victory, Rhodes told BT Sport he had doubts about recovering from the injury, but named two WWE executives who kept him motivated, quote, You know, everyone has doubts, even the most confident people. Maybe I don't have it, and I'll tell you two people that kind of kept me in check were Nick Khan and Bruce Pritchard. I don't know why they've got reputations because, man, they've done nothing but been angels to me. I mean, Nick Khan and Bruce both don't see Dusty when they see me. They see me. That's big. That's big with me. Cody continued to reflect on the day the injury occurred, remembering he knew his time in the ring was going to be limited just due to the discoloration. This forced him to swallow his pride and to go in for surgery, kicking off his long road to recovery. He said he was embarrassed something so devastating happened at the peak of his wrestling career. Quote, I was at the top of my game, or the measurable you can make like oh this is working we're selling this people are tuning in oh my gosh I'm doing it I'm doing it and then I got hurt bench pressing at my gym and probably a lot of wrestling fans involved with that but I didn't know Rhodes explained now he then told a story about him throwing a, a bottle at the rock's face kind of he said, quote, for whatever reason, I was drinking Yoohoo in this incident with, um, it, I should take a step back here. Brandy Rhodes recently tweeted a semi-cryptic uh, reminiscence about a conversation she had with her now husband 11 years ago before they both left WWE. Now, Brandy didn't expand on her memory, but Cody Rhodes did in this interview with Ariel Hawane of BT Sport. He said, quote, for whatever reason, I was drinking Yoohoo, Cody began, noting he was standing in front of a large bus with the faces of John Cena and Dwayne The Rock Johnson staring at him. And he he, it had been in front of me for about a year, and I get it. It's Cena, it's Rock, but I was getting so close and getting knocked back down, and I took the Yoohoo bottle, and I threw it against the side of the bus, and I told Brandy, I just can't do this. I can't be number 25 on the call sheet. I can't even be 1B, man. I want to play quarterback. Rose says that at the time, he was a young man with an ego, and he believed he was truly good enough to be the face of WWE. Maybe I had some things when I left that I was right about, the 2023 Men's Royal Rumble winner confessed, but there was a lot I wasn't right about. Rhodes goes on to say he needed to do a lot of growing up and he's still doing it to this day. But yeah, I threw a Yoo-Hoo bottle against The Rock's face. A poor Rock, I'm so sorry. Rhodes admit he was tired of what he felt were the same faces over and over again. Quote, these guys, they're on top, they're on top, they're on top, and they're on top for a reason. I just wanted to be in that spot, and it took me some time to even get close to it. Now, as far as Rhodes, he's going to have a busy week. He didn't do any media in the build-up to the Royal Rumble, but now he's doing a lot to spread the fact he won the match. The official Twitter account of Logan Paul's impulsive podcast announced on Sunday that the 2023 men Royal Rumble winner Cody Rhodes will be a guest on his show this Tuesday January 31st that being tomorrow in the clip that was shared earlier Rhodes, te uh, Rhodes teased about eliminating Paul in the men's rumble to which Paul responded he wasn't mad both Rhodes and Paul made their WWE returns at the 36th annual rumble on Saturday after dealing with respective injuries Paul of course was a surprise entrant while Rhodes was announced ahead of time on uh, an edition of Monday Night Raw uh, Paul, as I mentioned, had been sidelined since November of last year. The YouTube star had injured his knee during his match at the Crown Jewel event uh, against undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns. As noted previously, Paul has signed a multi-year deal with WWE. He signed it back in June of last year. The first match he had after signing with the promotion was at SummerSlam last year where he defeated The Miz. Um, and again, what that will lead to, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, it, it's possible because sometimes uh, these podcasts do lead to matches. So... Could we see Logan Paul versus Cody Rhodes at Elimination Chamber? Anything's possible, considering Rhodes doesn't have a lot to do in this sort of brief period now, between now and WrestleMania. Of course, we could have a situation maybe where it's Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins uh, right now to sort of dovetie their feud, and then that leads into Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul at WrestleMania. I guess that is a possibility. 
We kind of touched on this yesterday, so we don't want to go too long on this. But, of course, with the new regime of Triple H taking over Vince McMahon, several people have returned to the company. He, one of Triple H's first moves as chief content officer was re-signing a litany of formerly released stars, bringing them back to the company. Names such as Karrion Cross, Braun Strowman, Bray Wyatt, they all returned after previously being let go under Vince McMahon. Now, many fans have been wondering how long most of these talents were signed back for. According to Sean Ross Sapp of Fight for Select, they provided an update on this, noting that many of the WWE deals are three-year contracts that, that expire in mid to late 2025. There are different exceptions. For example, the OCs, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, they're on five-year contracts. We don't know the specifics of Karrion Cross, Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt, but the assumption is that they're all on three-year deals. Beth Phoenix, of course, is back in WWE, making her return alongside her husband, Edge, at the Royal Rumble. And Beth Phoenix wants to punish Rhea Ripley. Of course, Phoenix and Ripley have been feuding for months as the WWE Hall of Famer has been on Edge's side of his rivalry with the Judgment Day. Of course, Edge founded the group and he initially aligned himself with Ripley before the group turned on him when Finn Balor joined in June 2022. Ripley and Phoenix have crossed paths before as the Eradicator attacked her during Edge's I Quit match with Balor at Extreme rules in October last year. Following the bout, Edge and Beth Phoenix were absent until they returned at the Royal Rumble. Edge competed in the Rumble match and eliminated Balor, Priest, and eventually attempted to eliminate Mysterio, but the stable eliminated him from the match. They then attacked him at ringside, but Beth Phoenix showed up and took the fight to Ripley. Phoenix and Ripley have now traded shots on Twitter. The legend vowed to drag Ripley to how, while the powerhouse responded by saying Phoenix is in her playground now. The glamour mother fired back by stating that playgrounds are for children and she's going to punish Ripley. Uh, Ripley said, quote, can't wait to be welcomed home with open arms. You're in my playground now. And uh, Phoenix said, quote, playgrounds are for children and kid mother is back to punish you. So seemingly we're building to a match when that match is going to be, whether it's Elimination Chamber, probably not WrestleMania, considering Ripley won the Women's Rumble match. We'll have to wait and see. Now, she also spoke, Rhea Ripley, to Ariel Hwani of BT Sport. And uh, there have been a lot of comparisons between her and WWE Hall of Famer China. It's persisted over several years. And following her victory at the Royal Rumble in San Antonio, Texas, Ripley spoke to BT Sport's Ariel Hwani about being compared to the ninth wonder of the world in recent years saying, quote, I think it's cool. I want people to keep saying that, Rhea affirmed. Now, one of the most notable moments from China's run in WWE was her Intercontinental Championship victory back in 1999, which Ripley wants to emulate. Quote, Kofi said he wants to see me go for the Intercontinental title, and I'm so down for it. I love being compared to China. She also said, though, quote, I can't be the next China. She was amazing, and she was herself, and she was unique. But I'm the first Rhea Ripley. And, and that's the important thing, I think, as well, um, that... Yes, you can be compared to people. Yes, you can be, you know, the 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 next. It's always difficult to be the next anything, isn't it? But certainly Rhea Ripley, she's the first Rhea Ripley. There's no doubt about that. And she does a fantastic job. Finally, Pat McAfee has responded or reacted rather to his return at the Royal Rumble. We mentioned that um, nobody knew about it and the Royal Rumble was a night that's known for surprises and the 2023 Premium Live event was no different. The likes of Edge, Logan Paul, Nia Jax, Chelsea Green, they all appeared in the men's and women's Royal Rumble matches. However, the shocks took place before any matches even happened as Pat McAfee returned to WWE to join Michael Cole and Corey Graves to call all of the action. And the former NFL star has commented on what the return meant to him. Quote, that was awesome. Massive thank you to the folks of the WWE Universe that were in the Alamo Dome. I remember that hello forever, McAfee said on Twitter. Quote, so grateful to be back tonight. Uh, shout out to Michael Cole and Corey Graves. Great to see the WWE family backstage again. I've missed everyone. Now, McAfee hasn't been seen in WWE since September of last year after he signed a deal with ESPN to work as an analyst for College Game Day. This led to WWE switching up its broadcast teams with Wade Barrett joining Cole on the blue brand while Booker T took his spot on NXT. While McAfee initially wanted to do both jobs, the decision was made for him to take a break until the season had finished so he didn't have to travel as much. Now, the return was something that was kept a complete surprise from the majority of the people in the company and that included Graves and Cole themselves. While McAfee was back at it's Saturday night. It remains to be seen whether he'll return to SmackDown full time as of right now. Again, we'll have to wait and see. But it was great to have McAfee back. As I mentioned, the guy's a national treasure. Some of his one-liners on commentary were amazing. <laughs> Watching on the take out the P in Peacock, and that's what he said, was one of my 
favorites and uh you know it, it just he like i said before I, in my opinion he's this generation's bobby the brain heenan in that he doesn't really call a lot of the action in terms of the moves or the minutia of the moves he'll, he'll know certain moves and all that kind of stuff but it's his personality it's his charisma it's his reaction to people's entrances to funny moments it's his one-liners it just makes him great and it brings personality back to the broadcast booth and that had been so eradicated in recent years and that's why he's so important as I said that's why he's just an absolute national treasure I love me some Pat McAfee but there you go guys that's the latest WWE news for you be sure to smash a like on the like button be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner let me know your thoughts on today's WWE news stories in the comment section below and I'll speak for you again very very soon Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.